Hey, welcome back to another great RC Wars video. This is going to be part two of our What's Inside Your Submersible Well Pump uh, series. So what we're going to talk about today is the pump end. Uh, if you didn't catch the last video, we tore open uh, literally a motor and showed you all the different things that are going on inside that motor. We talked a little bit about the thrust bearing. So if you didn't catch that video, go ahead and back up, watch that, and then uh, step over here. Unless you don't want to, other than stay tuned. So anyways, uh, submersible well pump pumps. We've got multiple stages of impellers. We have talked a little bit about these in the past. Um, so what we have here is an old pump that we recently replaced uh, and we have the stack kit that came out of this pump. So this is just an empty, see if I can set this up without knocking it over. This is just an empty body of what used to be the pump. And then of course it's just like this where it would bolt on to the motor and it was in fact the motor that we tore apart yesterday. Okay, so here we are with the stage kit. This is a Gould's uh, stat kit as it would oftenly, oftentimes be called. Um, that came out of this pump body here. Uh, so this is just comprised of a bunch of wafers essentially where this one is damaged. Hopefully maybe you can see that. Um, this piece right here is not necessarily supposed to be removable um, and clearly this pump got bound up at some point in some way and this just tore clean loose um, so that one's no good anymore but this one is not in too terrible of a shape so you've got the impeller which this shaft rotates it's got a hex uh, uh, fitting in here or shape to it i suppose that conforms with the shaft and forces that rotation and those are supposed to rotate inside of this uh, what we would call basically a stage separator which also leads into a diffuser of sorts um, so the impeller is actually the gray bit that is below this diffuser let's see if i can pry this out real quick for you guys okay so what we've got here we've got our diffuser and we actually have our impeller now you can see this has a bunch of build up on it where obviously what we encountered was a lot of up thrust that pushed this impeller real hard into that diffuser as it was rotating and that heat caused this material to kind of wedge up and bind up all together here. It's pretty fragile and, and trash. So like I said, this one is obviously bad and very well worn. So this is the portion that actually spins like the impeller should and then it's slinging the uh, the water up through the next stage and it just goes from top to bottom. Now, interestingly enough, uh, when it comes to multi-stage pumps, each stage increases the pressure but has no impact on the flow. So that's kind of a cool uh, brain teaser. So this one here, let's get this one off. Here's what a good one looks like, or mostly good. That impeller right there is in pretty good shape. Um, definitely service worthy. You can see it does have some wear around this section and some wear that's corresponded here, but that's not terrible. That, that impeller would probably still work just fine for at least a, a period of time as long as there wasn't too much up thrust going on. So let's back up a little bit and talk about how to get this out of your uh, actual pump assembly. Because if you're having problems with pump performance and you've determined that it's not the motor um, and maybe you want to crack that thing open and take a look, then you may be able to do so. A lot of times the less expensive pumps are sealed and cannot be opened in this way. Um, they're essentially potted in place or um, however you want to look at it, but they are not removable. So if we step over <clears throat> move this out of the way uh, so we've got our cutaway here we've done a nice cutaway job on this one and there are actually threads that go to the head of this pump and these threads are, are just standard threads in most cases sometimes I've heard rumor that these can be reverse threads but I've yet to run into one that is uh, reverse threads so you can see here hopefully on the pump body uh, that we've already removed the head from, that those threads go quite a, quite a ways in there and they're relatively fine threads. So you wanna be careful when you're removing those because this is mo in most cases gonna be stainless steel on stainless steel. So you do have potential for galling. So don't get too carried away with over tightening or loosening too rapidly because uh, you can run into some galling. The major thing that's gonna hold you up is you can disregard these screws. These are just demo um, to hold this uh, steel more close and uniform, but 
your pump at home is going to have these screws for the cable guard which actually thread all the way through the body into the head assembly to keep it from being able to rotate on purpose. Um, so you're going to have to remove these screws and usually the way that I like to do it is I'll take a, a towel or a shop rag wrap it around the pump so that I can put it in the vise without causing any damage to the body of the pump. Get a decent hold on it. Don't over clamp it down or you can potentially damage the internals because uh, it's not super thick steel in most cases on these. And then once it's in the clamp, I can use a pipe wrench or a, a larger box head to remove this uh, just in the, in the standard lefty loosey righty tighty type of format, like I said, in most cases. So it's fairly simple to take these apart. <clears throat> Some things that I like to do um, before I even start taking it apart, obviously your first step, take your motor and separate it from your pump if you're troubleshooting, um, and then try to rotate each accordingly. And I do believe that we have some videos where we go more in depth on troubleshooting a motor and troubleshooting a pump. So you can refer to those um, <clears throat> if you need more detail, or of course you can always give us a call if you need some advice. So. Interestingly enough, there's a lot of different impeller designs uh, and stage designs that we have out there. So this one here, this is an AY McDonald with a uh, glass reinforced plastic impeller with a plastic diffuser. Um, and then as you saw here, this one is the Goulds. It has stainless steel uh, separating cups, whereas the AY McDonald does not have those. So from a price standpoint, I would assume that this Goulds is going to be just a little bit more money than this AY McDonald. But <clears throat> they both share a commonality that they each have what is called a floating stack design or a floating stage design. So as you could see when we were taking this apart, obviously some of these are stuck together because they're bad, but as we get farther in uh, to the pump, all these components are not fixed in any way to the shaft. They just simply slide up and down freely. And that's so that if um, you have uh, sediment or things of that nature that pass through the pump, the impellers have the ability to move up and down to get the heck out of the way. There's also a such thing as a fixed stage design, which uh, the best example, or I guess the most prominent example I can think of is Grunfoss. Uh, their impellers are stainless steel, their diffusers are stainless steel, and they're a fixed design, so they don't allow movement. Instead, they're just a really tough and durable material. Um, so kind of multiple ways to approach it. And oftentimes, if you've got really crazy water, um, whether it has a lot of sediment or it has a lot of um, organic material, you know, there's definitely a right pump and a wrong pump, but generally speaking, uh, on relatively clean water, the difference between a, a fixed stage and a mobile stage type of a design, uh, you're going to get similar performance out of either one. So that's basically in a nutshell. Oftentimes in uh, well pumps from 5 gallons a minute up through 25 gallons a minute, you will have a built-in check valve. And there's a lot of different ways that manufacturers do that. Once again, Grunfoss does it with just a small stainless steel disc that uh, when the pump shuts off, the disc just drops down and covers a hole. Um, not super scientific, but it works as long as it's machined properly. Uh, this one here is what I call the poppet design, where it's just got this little poppet that is pushed up by the flow of the water, and then it falls back down and rests on that relatively decent thickness o-ring right there and prevents the backflow. Uh, obviously the reason you want a check valve is if the pump uh, doesn't have a check valve the water will flow in reverse causing the pump to turn backwards and then if the pump tries to start whilst turning backwards you could potentially break the shaft uh, which is definitely a problem. So check valves are important um, and that's basically the inside of a pump. It's super simple. They all, uh, each manufacturer's design is just a slight bit different. Some have O-rings in some places that others don't. Some of their stages and stacks go to, together slightly differently. If you need to order a stack kit for a pump and it's a product line that we carry, feel free to give us a call. 
we can help you locate uh, the parts and pieces to put that all back together if you want to make an old pump serviceable again. Keep in mind, oftentimes these kits are not necessarily that much less money than a new pump, and oftentimes a new pump is going to come with a full warranty, so you'll have to make that evaluation yourself on whether or not it's worthwhile. Um, <clears throat> so I think that that's pretty much inside of a submersible well pump. If I missed anything, if anybody wants, uh, has any questions or is curious to see anything in more detail, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. Thanks for joining us today and we will catch you next time.